Jailbreaking iOS 4, PHP VirtualBox front ends, tweaking our Untangle router, streaming music with a little Python code, detecting bandwidth throttles, and a whole lot more on today's show. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Dine Incorporated. Got a great idea? It all starts with a great domain, domain.com, and go to Assist Express. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Shannon, that's so weird. You've got the same background as me in Missouri. Oh, yeah, I guess I do. Oh, wait a second. Uh-oh. Oh, Dude, snap. You're real. I'm real. In the flesh. Awesome. <laughs> we, are, <laughs> we are like a ninja today, sniping up a little bit of studio space in guess nowhere. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it's so good to see you. It's good to see you, too. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome to be out here. I love coming season out here. Season 7, episode 26. You know what that means? Last episode of the season. Oh, what an epic season it was. Oh now, gosh. we've got so much so much in this great show. Yes. Um, kicking it old school, but let's just right off the bat in the A block, we've been getting a lot of emails about people want to see the jailbreaking. They have, the yeah. Four. Uh, you want to do this live. To, I'm... I okay. dare you to do it live to tape. You that's, dare me? I All dare right. you. I'm kind of scared about this. I really don't want to brick my phone, but everybody's like, oh, it's so easy. You don't have to worry about it. And I did I did um, back up my phone before I came out here, so hopefully I don't screw it up. <laughs> you want to go up to one of these cameras and show it off? Because that would make the most sense. Little production notes right. in the middle of A block live to tape. That's how I'll, we roll. Uh, I'll go up to mine over cool. here. Cool. Okay. Okay. So so what do we uh, what do we have to do to jailbreak now? Because I heard it is super easy. Yeah, it is. You just have to go to jailbreakme.com on your phone, press go, and it automatically brings you up to this jailbreak me. It tells you who it's by, and it tells you you can get tweaks and apps that Apple doesn't allow in their app stores. So it's just like any of the other old jailbreaks, except this one is apparently super simple. I just have to slide this across. And it starts downloading, which might take a while depending on your download speed. So now it's telling me to sit tight. And this is part of the waiting game. This is awesome. where I wait. Now that is super easy. And the Library of Congress has made it legit now, making DMCA yes. exemptions that say, which hey. Which is crazy exciting for everybody who wants to jailbreak their phone. Well, I mean, we could always jailbreak <laughs> it before. But now there's no repercussions, if you right. will. You're not going to go to jail or, but, or any, well. There has been some new news about this Apple jailbreak. You know, Apple has heard about this, so they came back and said, well, if you do this, it's going to void your warranty, and if you want to send it in, we're not going to fix it for free. And then they also said that they are working on this security flaw in Safari, which lets you be able to do this in the first place. Right, you've got to think about this. What you've basically done is you've just gone to a website, hit a button, and yeah. now it's like adding some stuff to your operating it's system. And basic, this is this is kind of uh, scary to think about. Yeah. You're, you're installing a rootkit, essentially. Yeah. You're, you're willfully installing a rootkit. I mean, not that it's malicious, but it's, any other website could use the same technique yes. to take over your essentially, phone. Essentially, it's, it's a big security flaw, and they do need to fix it. But right now, it's awesome. A security <laughs> flaw for good. Yeah, or so you know, I'm going to get Cydia, which is great. So what's so Cydia going to give us? Um, Cydia gives you everything. Like you can, let's see, you can change your ringtones, MMS tones, email, email tones, cre cool things like that. There's also apparently a free tethering app. Ooh, I love that. Which idea. is very useful because you do get charged for tethering over like AT and T. You do have to have to keep in mind how much data you are using if you don't have an unlimited data mm -hmm. thing on there. Unlimited up to two gigs, of course. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, didn't you have City on your previous iPhone? You're like, I did, so, yes. what was it, the Silverback? It was excellent. <laughs> yes, my Silverback Gorilla 2G iPhone. Oh. Yeah, it was scary. Um, this also lets you install apps that haven't been um, allowed by the Apple Store, of course, for some reason or another. It might be for you know the free tethering, for example. Um, this did have a couple of problems when it first came out that you should keep in mind. MMS and FaceTime didn't work at first, but the creators of the jailbreakme.com, they did fix this. Apparently, I'm going to test it out to you to make sure. Rock on, all right. Yeah, so well, they did fix it, so apparently there's no problems with it now. That is the most dead simple hack. In fact, I'm just yeah. going to go ahead and give you the Hack 5 Award for the easiest hack ever demonstrated live to tape, uh, because, I mean, really, that makes con boot look complicated. Okay, so it says Cydia has been added to the home screen. Have fun. 
and I'll show the camera this. There we go, sweet. That's it, wow, that is dead simple. Talking about dead simple, we also so have some press. really okay. cool segments for you guys uh, this week. We're kicking it old school, doing some stuff with streaming media, using virtual machines and Linux and some Python, and doing it the, the old school hacker way because we can, because the long way is more fun. You know, take the scenic route, why not? And then you've got some uh, fun stuff coming up, right, in Snubs Report? I do. I have uh, this way of bandwidth testing, apparently. Like, I have lots of problems when I'm downloading podcasts over, you know, yeah. the app, Apple Store or the websites themselves or maybe even BitTorrent, where suddenly my internet slows down to, like, a standstill. Well, and your internet is in Missouri, and, and that, that, that's, yes. I guess, something we should uh, address here. And the, the last episode of the seventh season, to think that we started this season in a studio in Virginia, and here we are in a studio in San Francisco. I so I got to thank everybody for sticking around season seven. Thank I know you it's so much. such a huge transition. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm so stoked for season eight. Me too. We have some yes. really cool stuff in store, and I hope to get you in studio a lot more. It seems to work. I love coming out here and doing segments in studio instead of like in my living room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it looks like we're, we might be great. putting together some, some better kind of, instead of, you know, borrowing, stealing, sniping oh, yeah. other people's studio stuff. So that's we'll see how it goes. Too. Yeah. So stick around. Great stuff coming up. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and thank one of our excellent sponsors. I can't believe it. The rubber ducky domain I once already taken. By registering domain names in the shower again. Of course. Great ideas start with great domains. I'm gonna get all my great ideas in the shower. You do? My favorite way, I'm building to multitask. You can do just about anything in the shower. Then forget the weak sauce domains. Get a doxy OH order. I miss the chisel. Dude, great idea and great domain. What? Oh please, if this is wrong, I don't want to be right. That's right. .co domains are now live. They're the biggest domain since .com, and you can get them now over at Domain.com. And while you're there, check out their virtual private servers. They provide unrestricted root access on Windows or Linux. They're easy to manage with cPanel and Plesk, and they're capable of hosting just about any size website. You may have even heard our very own Hack5.org is pimped out on a Domain.com VPS. No matter where you are your next idea, remember, Domain.com is the place to save 15% off at checkout with coupon code HAK5. Got a great idea? It all starts with a great domain. Domain.com. I don't know about you guys, but when it comes to riding the twisties on a gorgeous day, you need the perfect playlist. And that may change from day to day. And with only 16 gigs internally on my phone, my MP3 player of choice, it's just not cutting it. I mean, I know there's services like Pandora and Last.fm, but that's just not doing it for me. And while there's other services like Orb or something, see I'm thwarting emails already, that could allow me to potentially get at my 100 gigs of MP3s back home, that's nowhere near as fun as setting up a Linux server with some PHP on a virtual machine mounted on the wall. I mean, yes, so let's just geek it up and put together a, uh, a sweet little homebrew system so that we can access our media from anywhere. Now, as you guys know from episode 717, we put together a really freaking sweet wall-mounted virtual box server, and let's go ahead and put it to some more use. But first, a little re-engineering, because, you know, it wouldn't be Hack5 without <laughs> redoing everything. Now, last time we uh, got into this, we were using the virtual box web console, and while it's very cool and I think it had a lot of potential, it hasn't really developed much since we last spoke about it. But what has? is PHP VirtualBox. PHP being my favorite language, let's go ahead and try it out. I actually have it right here. I'm VNC'd into the uh, VirtualBox, and you can actually pick up yourself a copy of the uh, PHP VirtualBox over at code.google.com slash PHP VirtualBox. It's really freaking polished. So grab yourself a copy and it really just relies on the built-in web server that comes with uh, VirtualBox. So on Linux, that's uh, VBox web server in right there, user bin, I think. And to initiate that, really, you just need to go in and, uh, and give it tack B and then tack tack your log file and wherever you want to specify that to if you're not just going to dev null. But if your VirtualBox web server that comes with VirtualBox is up and running, it's going to make using, I mean, that, that, well, you have to have it. But uh, once you have that going, 
PHP VirtualBox is a breeze to set up. So if you don't already have on your, you know, on your uh, virtual machine server here running the latest Ubuntu um, Apache and PHP, go ahead and grab those. Simple apt get install Apache 2 and uh, lib Apache 2 tac mod tac PHP 5. There's a million other ways to do that. You could probably just type in LAMP and get yourself a nice little Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP stack. But regardless, with those two things set up, configuring PHP VirtualBox is nothing more than checking out the configuration file here in slash var slash www or whatever your www root is. You copy over the package. In my case, I've put it in PHP VBox, and we want to take a look at the config.php file. So this right here is where we just pretty much need to configure the username and the password and the location. Uh, everything else is pretty standard. So I've set that up right here. And that's it. So all we have to do now is browse to it. And if I hit it on the local host, you'll see that here we go, we have it running. Um, so let's actually hit it externally. 10.13.37.165 slash PHP VBox. And there you go. It lo should look very familiar. It looks so much like the, uh, the natural interface on the, uh, the, the desktop side. Um, and we can take a look and see all of the stats on our server. We can create a new server. I actually already have two running here, but let me show you how similar it is to the desktop counterpart. So we click new. I'm going to make a new server here. Next, we're going to call it, I don't know, our test server. It's going to be Linux, Debian, Wahoo. Next, give it uh, 384 megs RAM, sure. And we're going to create a new hard drive for it. I mean, have you noticed all I'm doing is clicking next? <laughs> this is so easy. Next, yes, we want it dynamically expanding. Okay, we're going to give it an 8 gig hard drive. Nah, we'll bump that up to a 36. There we go. And finish. Finish again. And we now have a test server. We click over to here, we see all of the settings, and we can go ahead, and this is what makes it really neat. You'll see this console, right? Now, it's not running an RDP connection at the moment, but we can go ahead and enable that by going over on the details page to click RDP console here. And here's the settings dialog, very similar to what you would find in the desktop counterpart. We click on remote display, we can enable the server. Now, by default, it wants to be 3389, which is the default port for remote desktop protocol, but you can't have all of your servers on 3389. So I've already got one on 3389, 3390. I'm going to go 3391. We can also, if we wanted to in here, I'll, I'll just do what I normally do, come down to network, and instead of NAT, I want it to be bridged. Personal preference. It's the way I like to do it. And if we wanted to set up any USB or any additional storage, I will actually come in here to the CD-ROM. And you see on my IDE chain, I've got empty. Well, I can go ahead and click here, and I have a drop-down of all of my ISOs. And then I can just pop over to here, and if I wanted to add an ISO, I could click Add, and then give it the location of a, uh, of a file that I could you know, boot off of. Right? So I've already got it set up with what I want. I believe I'm just going to go with Ubuntu 10.04, and OK. And there we go. Uh, if I click on where it says 3391, it's going to go ahead and download a uh, file here where it says test server. This right here is a already set up, ready to go RDP file that's going to allow you to connect from whatever RDP client you have, whether it be Windows, Mac, Linux, and uh, make it so super easy. So you, know, you don't even need to come into this uh, web interface, but for when you need to manage it. And the RDP is one of the things that I absolutely love about VirtualBox. So with that all set up, let's go ahead and hit start. The machine is booting up. We'll click over to the console tab and do it in the web. We'll click connect. We've got this built right into the little web interface. We can say, hey, look at that. We're booting Ubuntu. And from here, I could just go ahead and walk through the installation. But I've got a turkey already in the oven. I figure let's just go ahead and move on because you don't need to watch me set up an Ubuntu box. But we do have one with music and everything already running. So the MP3 server. I'll connect to the console over here. And log in. And there we go. We're on a virtual machine 
on our server, ready to set it up as a service to stream us some MP3s. Now there's one thing that I am going to go ahead and do that's gonna make our life a lot easier here, and that is to set it up with a static IP address. Uh, by default, it's just going to be um, DHCP. It's gonna grab whatever IP it can from our Untangle server upstairs. And that's fine for when we're you know, testing this out and whatnot, but when I wanna actually deploy this and be able to hit it, I don't want it to reboot, get a different IP address. So I'm just gonna do it the GUI way. Why not? So we're gonna to go to System, Preferences, and network connections. You'll see that we have our Ethernet 0. I'm going to click Edit, and I've already set this up for a static IP address. So under IP version 4, you'll see that I've given it an address down here, and it's really just a matter of, instead of it being DHCP here, clicking Manual, double-clicking into these fields, and specifying the information at once. If you don't know what to put in there, uh, you could just go ahead and pull up a terminal, run ifconfig, and there you go, it tells you right here what your IP address is, what the broadcast is, and, um, and you just give it that information here in the GUI, and you're all set. You could also do that with ifconfig, it's just you know, preference. So with it set up with the static IP address, and I've already got it loaded up with some music, really it's just a matter of setting up some really sweet Python scripts, a little bit of port forwarding, and some awesome stuff that's going to make it easy for us to access it from anywhere. But first, I want to take a quick break and thank one of the sponsors making this episode possible. Dyn Incorporated offers two extremely reliable, rock-solid global DNS platforms, DynDNS.com for home and small business users and the Dynect platform for enterprises and fast-growing organizations. Dyn is making DNS sexy by powering the best brands on the web, including Revision 3. Visit Dyn.com slash Revision 3 for more info. Always looking to stay ahead of the pack and provide clients with the most secure solutions, Dyn is one of the first DNS registrars to support DNSSEC. Set up a simple .org or .se domains in just a few clicks. DNSSEC is set to roll out for .coms and other TLDs in the coming years, and Dyn Incorporated will be there every step of the way. Need a more powerful DNS solution for your small business or growing enterprise? The Dynect platform offers advanced solutions for everything from small businesses to fast-growing enterprises, including load balancing, traffic management solutions, and a powerful global network that will optimize the performance of your web system. Visit Dyn.com slash revision3 and click on Dynect to learn more. All right, so so far we've got a brand new Ubuntu machine running on our wall-mounted virtual server here, and it's set up with a static IP address. We've copied our music over to it, and we're gonna do some freaking sweet stuff with Python that's gonna allow us to access our music from anywhere, like our phone. But to enable us to actually hit that server, we are going to need to do two things. That is port forward, and we're gonna have to set up some sort of DNS thing that's gonna allow us to be able to easily get to our home computer even if our cable modem's IP address were to change. So as you remember, we've set up Untangle, so I'm gonna go ahead and log into that. And from Untangle, I'm gonna click Config, and then Networking. So the first place I'm gonna go in Networking is Hostname, because Untangle, built right in, like many other routers do, have the ability to update whatever your dynamic DNS service is. Now, of course, I'm using DynDNS here, so I'm gonna check this box here, and I'm gonna go ahead and enter in my login credentials, and the host name that I want this to be. Now this is essentially going to allow us to have a fixed host name or a DNS name for our home server, even if our cable modem were to reboot and get a different IP address from our internet service provider. So that's gonna save us if I'm really needing to rock out to some Duran Duran and it's change the IP address, that would totally ruin my day. We don't want that to happen. So with that setup, let's also come over here to port forwards. So I'm gonna create a new port forward and I'm gonna call it MP3 server. And the protocol is going to be TCP and the port number, we'll choose other here, is going to be 8080. It's a web server that's gonna be running with Python that's going to allow us to access our MP3s. Uh, the listening IP address is going to be 10.13. 37.46, that's the IP address of the virtual machine that we just created. So I'll hit OK. And there we go, we not only have our ports forwarding and our dynamic DNS, but we are ready to move on back over to our virtual machine here. So from PHP virtual box, I'm connected to our MP3 server. And let's take a look at Edna. Edna is the special sauce that is going to make all of this awesome. So. You can grab yourself a copy of Edna over at edna.sourceforge.net and it is such a simple way to 
access your media that I know you could probably just throw a bunch of MP3s on an Apache server and do a directory listing, but this takes it one step further, allowing you to dynamically generate M3U files or playlist files. So I can go into a directory and say, give me a playlist that will use these MP3s as a network resource. So then on my Droid, I'm like, dude, I want to listen to, you know, um, something awesome. I said Dran Dran earlier. I'm going to totally redeem myself and say orgy candy ass. And, uh, and boom, it would just give me an M3U file so I could like go through and, you know, place ditches and Blue Monday and I'm dating myself, but awesome, right? So uh, it also allows us to do templates, which is going to come into play with the smartphone a little later. So suffice it to say, grab yourself a copy at edna.sourceforge.net. And over here in my virtual box, I'm just going to pop over to my Edna directory. This is a super, super simple thing to configure. So if you're a nano guy like myself, you would type nano tac w edna.conf. And we'll have to go ahead and tweak uh, what the port is. Obviously, we've set it up for 8080, so we'll leave that as it is. And then we can tell it where the directory, where our template is, or our resources, which are the icon files. And we can come down here, and if we wanted to, we could set up authentication so that you would have to log in. And as it is right now, out of the box, just with it configured on 8080 and pointing it towards our music in uh, slash home slash user slash music, uh, we are going to be good to go. So I'm going to quit out of this. And starting Edna, since it is Python, just a matter of running it. Uh, we do need to make sure that we have Python version 1.5 or higher. So Python tac tac version. Yeah, I think we're quite a while past 1.5. So Python edna.php. Sorry, PHP. PY. There we go, Darren. PY. So if I come over to my smartphone in my browser here, I'm going to take a look at it. I've already bookmarked it. Dude, check that out. Dale Chase, the Totenhosen, good stuff. Let's play a little, little Dale Chase. Limit Break, his new album. It's really good. And I gotta say, one of my favorites off this new album is Who's Your Doctor? If you are a Doctor Who fan, you have to check this out. So it's connecting. There we go. Isn't that awesome? I love this. So there we go, tying together a whole bunch of different services to put together a homebrew way to listen to our music from anywhere. And you could do so much more with this, these techniques we've used before, but it's very cool to just go ahead and tie them all together because while there are services like Orb and whatnot, which will do it off the shelf, you have way more fun getting in deep with the Python and tweaking this. Let me talk about tweaking this for a second while I turn this down. Edna is really neat that it uses template files. You see that I'm like zooming in on the web page to, to make it look right on my droid because it's kind of made for like a desktop. Well, if I head over to the templates directory here, you'll see that we have a bunch of different templates that really, I've already uh, copied one over to darren.ezt. And if I come into that, it's simply HTML, and every now and then there will be uh, a reference here that, uh, that it fills in the gaps. So you could go ahead and tweak this to your heart's content to make it look perfect on your device. So there you go. A uh, lot of stuff there, but I want you to go ahead and let me know what you think of segments like these. And if you have questions or comments, you can uh, hit us up, feedback at hack5.org, or find more details in the show notes. So get this, you're doing a whole bunch of downloading of your favorite podcasts. You got your audio podcast and your video podcast, and you're getting set in the morning, ready to go off to work and listen to all your favorite podcasts in the morning. And it's on your high-speed connection, so you know it's going to get done in time. And then all of a sudden, everything just seems to come to a halt, and you look at your downloads, and they say that they're going to take a day? What the frig is that? That's not cool. And the first thing you think is, oh my god, my ISP, they must be throttling me because they think that I'm trying to download some torrent or something instead of a podcast. Not cool. And what really ticks me off is when the man takes advantage of us little guys trying to download our podcasts and uses up all that power to throttle us. But there is a way to figure out if this really is what's going on or if you just have a crappy internet connection. So the first thing I found was M Labs over at Google. 
It uses all these different kind of tests to monitor the performance, or your computer's performance. You guys are dirty. Don't think like that. And it'll do everything from like a regular speed test to a BitTorrent specific test, where if you're running BitTorrent, it's going to see if that will slow down your internet. Also, I found this thing called the Switzerland Method, which is by the Electronic Frontier Foundation, so we know it's good. The Switzerland Method will detect any modified packets that are traveling over your internets, which can mean anything from throttling going on to maybe blocking of your download traffic. So I went ahead and checked out these different kind of tests. Go over to measurementlab.net and click on test your internet connection. Choose the first one, the network diagnostic tool, and click on start. This test is going to test your internet connection speed and anything that slows it down. It only takes about 20 seconds, so go ahead and relax. Once it's finished, click on statistics to see a detailed guide of your network traffic and how it may be limited. Next, run the GLASNOS test. This test is going to look for traffic shaping when you're using such things as flash video or BitTorrent. Now, this one does take a lot longer. It takes eight minutes. So go ahead and relax and, you know, grab a cup of coffee or whatever you need to do. Also, make sure any downloads you have going in the background are paused for the moment because it'll give you a much, much better statistic once, once it's done. The MPED test is going to find and diagnose any problems in your end machine that have to do with network performance. Run this one and it'll send and receive data and then it'll show you any problems that you have in red. I have a lot of problems on my machine. Pathload 2 is a bandwidth test that's going to find out what your available bandwidth is. For this test, you must download the EXE and run the test. The last test through MLabs is Shaper Probe, a traffic shaping test. It's going to tell you if your ISP is traffic shaping when you upload, download, or both. And then it'll also tell you the max burst size before shaping begins. You also have to download the EXE for this test as well, so click Start and wait for the test to finish. And then the next one I found was the Switzerland test. Download the .tgz or the .zip over at SourceForge. Extract the files from the folder and read the install.txt for information on how to install it on your specific platform. Okay, so according to these tests, I'm not being throttled. I'm kind of sad about that for some really weird reason. I just have a really crappy internet connection out here in Missouri, so I guess it would be a lot cooler if I could call them up and be like, hey dude, I want a faster internet connection, you're throttling me. And then they'd be like, okay, and give me faster internet connection. Uh, but yeah, anyway, tangent, woo! Um, email me over at feedback at hack5.org about what you think of these and if you use any other certain kind of test to find out if you're being throttled. It's a very touchy subject, I know. And we will be right back after we have a brief word from one of our sponsors. If you're in technical support, your clients depend on you for fast, reliable service. That's why you need the best remote support solution available, GoToAssist, from our friends at Citrix. GoToAssist was recently named Market Leader in Remote Support by Frost & Sullivan and is recognized as the number one remote support solution available worldwide because it's easy, affordable, and secure. You don't have to pre-install software on your computer's machines and you can instantly start supporting them online. Try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, you must visit gotoassist.com slash hack5. That's gotoassist.com slash hak5 for a free trial. If you've got the technolest like Wayno from Tuxin showing off his Hack5 shirt, make sure to email us your images over at feedback at hack5.org. And we have brand new hack packs over at hack5.org slash store. We also have a couple of other brand new goodies that are sitting right over there. But I think I'm going to make you guys wait until you find out what these are. But you guys have been asking for them, so I'm really, really excited to put these up in the store for you guys. And don't forget, you can also subscribe on iTunes and YouTube. It's free and easy, the best way to support the show. Until next time, I'm Shannon Morris. Remember to trust your technolest. bring us in on here and then we'll go wide and it'll be like oh my god <laughs> if you've got the technolust like Wayno with that's kind of cool
creepy. Okay. Three, two, one. Is it a better clap? It's gonna be a better take. Nice. Yes. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm out riding, I need the perfect play. I, no. Once again, joined in the, oh wait, that's not there, cool. Uh. <laughs> One take snaps. <laughs> <laughs>